This channel is for immature audiences only. It is not for children, only for childish adults. We might play some video games that kids also like, but we say words like fuck and shit with alarming frequency and make crude, inappropriate, and morbid jokes all the damn time. Level 0 NPCs assumes no responsibility if your idiot spawn watches this and gets traumatized. Hey. 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 <laughs> Hey, 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 hey. Oh, bottom, <laughs> bottom oh five cold intros. Yeah, I was gonna say. I know. <laughs> hey, welcome back to uh, Laura. You Bow. always know it's good when when Matt opens his mouth, but even he hasn't decided what the <laughs> bit is yet. <laughs> I think this is gonna stand up to be one of the best. Oh of my all god! Time. If you. I, uh, hey, everybody, welcome. All time greats. Welcome home. This is your home welcome now. Home. <laughs> Yeah, home. This is your home. Level zero NPCs. Welcome home. Welcome Take home. Shoes off. Yeah. Please. This Don't is leave on. episode thirteen of the danger of Amanda. <laughs> you're you're <laughs> in it. This is your home. Uh, previous episode, not your home. Your vibe. Next episode, vibe. not your home. This episode. Oh. This episode specifically your, is your home. home. Yep. I thought you were saying something welcoming, like this, this, this environment that we create, this show is mm. home. But no, you mean this specific episode? <laughs> yeah. Mm. It's because he's got everything you love in it. Yeah. It's you're, you're making it just a little bit more stressful for everyone. Mm. Yeah. Wow, that low note on the harmonica is something else. I've been away yeah. for a week. I'm in a mood. We're gonna see what happens. So, you know, <laughs> it's a in it's a note that wondering. goes past your ears and goes directly into your brain. I'm only blowing in through the last hole. Much like a real home, you don't have a lot of control over everything that happens. No, and it's there's there's uh there's safety, but stress. Yeah, yeah, and there's a guy with a harmonica. Yep. Yeah, just, just like your home. <laughs> just like your home. I was just telling the gang how this screen has a lot of, like, a big range of, like, what you might call human skin tones here on the yeah. both dinosaurs, neither of which features on Laura Bow. <laughs> she's, uh, yeah, she's sort of, um, she's, Trump orange. Yeah, like Trump orange, kind of carrot colored. Whereas, like, there's a lot of, like, like sort of richer browns and pinks and, and peaches mm -hmm. on other stuff. Mm -hmm. Just occurred to me, like... I'm taking this into Photoshop. When did oh you're gonna you're gonna color correct it? I'm gonna sample um, this. I'm gonna sample the color. I want to see if she's actually that orange. <coughs> um, but like uh, you know, she could just get a lot of keratin. I was about diet. to say that exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Like that episode of Magic School Bus where Arnold is orange. And that episode no, of or House it, MD. Or is it Ralphie? Who's orange? One of them turns orange. House empty. There's a guy who was taking too much beta carotene and his skin turns orange. Oh, so. yeah, that can happen. That also can happen. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's why Laura like refuses to eat turkey and champagne is because she she got, she just loaded up on carrots on the train. <laughs> She's on that new carrot based fad diet. Mm -hmm. You know there probably was one. This was this is the 1920s. That uh, I think this is a. I think I learned on QI or something, so it may be dubiously factual, but the whole bit about uh, carrots being good for your eyesight was mm -hmm. an attempt to, like, sell carrots, basically. <laughs> it was also, like, I think the bit was to disguise the existence of radar, just the idea that, like, it was uh, the reason oh, yeah. the reason our pilots were able to, like... The reason we were able to shoot down planes is that our pilots ate a lot of carrots, which were good for your eyesight, rather than because we had developed radar. Huh. Aren't blueberries legitimately supposed to be good for your eyesight? I don't know. Hmm. I think the other Probably. aspect was, like, uh, like sweets and Ooh, stuff were hard to come by. So, like, carrots were, like, oh, they're good for you, and they're good for your eyes, and they're they're cheap to grow, and no one has to, you know... The world isn't falling apart because we're at war, kind of thing. Okay, so it, here's the. It verdict. occurs to me. Go ahead. She's orange. <laughs> yeah, th th oh, thanks for that. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I just had to. She's pinky orange. She's salmon. Yeah. Well, like we're salmon. we're we're orange. People are orange. Like people are shades of. We're we're big orange monkeys. 
human beings are. We're just like tones and saturations of orange so that you don't really notice. It's because of our, um, our orange blood. I feel like the game volume is very low. Like the music is, is nearly non-audible for me. But I'm just making sure, is that how you guys hear the music? Is there music happening right yeah, now? Yeah, I didn't realize, yeah. Okay, yeah, no, there, yeah, there I, is. There I, is. I, I don't hear it at all, but our audio balance on the call is always a, a, a mm -hmm. crapshoot. Hey everyone, welcome back to uh, Laura Bow. Danger of Amanda. Oh. The danger I'll of Amanda. Read it in post. You guys don't need to hear the music that badly, so. Yeah. Whatever. I'll hear it now. Yeah. Hear it now. Yeah, I can hear it. I can hear, it. hear a little bit of it there. Yeah, I, you I, know, I cranked up the volume in game and also out of game, so. I just realized that the little the little levers are all daggers mm -hmm. of Amon Ra. They are! They're That's, so yeah, the cute. Amon Ra daggers. That's great. And only mm -hmm. one of them is authentic. The rest of them were made in Pennsylvania. <laughs> Uh, okay, let's get right, the... We have, can we have we do, things to do. Yeah. Can we do yeah. something? Can we get the fuck out of this we've done our room? We've done our usual five minutes of chewing the scenery before starting to play the game. Well, so. we haven't hung out in a week, right? Like... That's true. This is this is, this is is pretty much when we talk to Luke. Yeah. That's true. It's pretty much when I talk to anybody. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you're in the pterodactyl portion of the dinosaur exhibit. I was hoping to find out what this door, where this door leads, but I guess I just gotta. There's a. Gotta go. This is the pterodactyl portion, but there's like a dimetrodon on the wall there. <laughs> yeah, there is a pterodactyl, but it's prominent. Like, like I'm not saying it's yeah. not a focal point of the exhibit. Dimetrodons yeah. aren't dinosaurs. Oh yeah. There's a dinosaur mm -hmm. exhibit here in town. I gotta go to actually at the Natural Ooh. History Museum. That's true. There is something one right now. Something feels wrong about a Tyrannosaurus Rex with a very, like, soft sort of shaped nose and eyes in the front. That's what it is. It's the eyes in the front. Because if you he's actually... got, he's got people eyes for sure. No, I was gonna yeah. say, I was gonna say, if you cover his eyes, it's better. It's not. It's, it's not. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I can, there I can, I can edge it over a little bit. A little bit. There you go. Oh yeah, it's, hey it's... guys, <laughs> I am a predator, so it makes more sense for my eyes to be forward. You might want to run away. <laughs> I think the T Rex did have binocular vision. That's yeah. I I one thing I love is old drawings of T Rexes, like old wrong renderings of the T Rex, like of all dinosaurs that have been misrepresented. Like the weird vertical tail dragging T Rex, really good. <laughs> uh, Bill Watterson, uh, if you're a fan of Calvin and Hobbes, used to draw T Rexes in that way with like, just dragging tails and stuff. They're lovely illustrations, but they're very, very wrong. And then, <sighs> by his own admission, over the course of his career, he got much better at drawing them and more invested in making them realistic. And it's neat to watch that evolve over the course of his work. Oh my God! Let's yes. take a look at the uh, at the Trex and see what it uh, what it has to say. The Trex. It's a Tyrannosaurus Rex. His name is Rex. Isn't that clever? He looks leathery. He looks like the it same exact like... material as my couch. <laughs> it feels like fake leathery reptile skin. Now keep your hands off the displays. My partner and I recently got a sort of caramel colored leather couch. It's it's great. Mm. The sign mm. says, "Push button to hear Rex speak." All right. Just like hey the old guys. guys. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Lionbacker Museum dinosaur display. My name is Rex, and I'd like to tell you a little bit about myself. I'm a type of dinosaur known as the Tyrannosaurus Rex which means king of the tyrant lizards. Although I was not the largest type of dinosaur, I was the largest predator to ever walk the earth. Some of my friends were 40 feet long and weighed 8 tons, with teeth that were 6 inches long. Your modern elephants don't weigh more than 6 tons, as, as means we're much bigger. I lived between 250 yeah. and 65 million years ago, during a period known as the Age of the Dinosaurs. Also, the Mesozoic area, era, sorry, the first complete air skeleton of a Tyrannosaurus sex was found just 24 years ago in Montana. Although there were many meat-eating dinosaurs, I was considered the best killing machine who ever lived. 
<laughs> Speaking of which, I'm feeling a bit hungry. Would you like to volunteer your next meal? <laughs> I love that our agreement was that I do all of the animal voices. And that was like two solid minutes of animal dialogue <laughs> that Matt just <laughs> leapt onto like a grenade. <laughs> it's funny. I, I just, I, for some reason, for some reason, I didn't register him as an animal. I, so, I even sorry. said it's time for Alex, but you know. I, didn't yeah, well, even Luke, read... I had forgotten about that bit myself until Luke teed me up. And I was yeah. like, well, this is great. There's actual animal dialogue in this. Nope, not having it. Yeah, I'm. I'm so sorry. I, 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 I viewed him as a as a male NPC. <laughs> no, I, I, I love it. I, I actually, I actually quite like the voice that you gave him. He does have a person face. It's true. I, it, that's <laughs> you, what it was. You, you looked at his face. You knew what he sounded like, and you made it happen. And I appreciate that. There was a moment in my brain because I wasn't listening to anything that was said before. <laughs> It happened. I didn't hear Luke say, Alex, you're up. I just think, was thinking to myself, well, if there's dialogue, I'm going to do it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like that you gave him kind of like a mansplainy voice. I think that was good. He's got that kind of a face about him. Anyway, I, I apologize. I, that, in, in retrospect, should have been your line. Uh, a yeah. metal button embedded in a wood sign on a pedestal. It looks like an admirable reconstruction mm. of fake leathery reptile skin. I also liked he had a bit of a homestyle winter voice. <laughs> <laughs> he did. He did a little bit. An iguana noun, up close and personal. Where's its thumbs? <laughs> hey, guys. <laughs> my eyes are not visible from here, so you get to have one in the middle of my head, making me look like some kind of weird thing. I uh, used to have a pet iguana and learned that iguanas have a primitive eye right on the top of their head. Uh, like a lot of reptiles do, they'll have a primordial eye that just senses light and dark right where Luke had that eyeball placed. Oh. Whoa. Hey, guys, that wasn't planned at all, but I'll take credit for it. <laughs> A small sign identifies this dinosaur as an iguana dawn, which means iguana dawn. <laughs> However, from the Tyrannosaurus Rex's point of view, this dinosaur could be identified as dinner. Yes, Don's iguana. <laughs> iguana dawn. Iguana the dawn, dawn, dawn of all iguanas. Yeah. I like the iguana Silence dumb. alone is great. All else is weakness. Alfred Devini. Was the iguana done the one with the that supposedly had the spiked thumb because they the found it big too thumbs. near the skeleton? Oh my god. I think that's still the thought is that they have it. But Matt and I have talked about the iguana done before. And I think you highlighted it as a reconstruction that can't be correct. Yeah, it doesn't seem... That doesn't seem right. Um, uh... The third eye is called a parietal eye, I believe. Mm. Right on. Located also, on the top of the head, uh, associated with the pineal gland, yada, yada, yada. Back in the 30s, and um, uh, th there was no way. There was no way anybody would have drawn an iguanodon that wasn't standing on two feet with its thumbs up. Thumbs up? <laughs> that, like, like back in the 80s, that's what an iguanodon was. It stood on two feet and it had two thumbs up and it was like, I'm a cool guy. <laughs> and I gotta find it. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta. I'll tell, uh, we'll, we, uh, we'll find an old picture, but I'll, I promise you, it's the hilarious. Fonzie Saurus. And they just, this... two, two little thumbs. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's good. This dinosaur feels like a sauropod. You're not sure how you know that. Perhaps your father told you what sauropods felt like when you were a child. That's a very surreal mm -hmm. dialogue box that, for some reason. That whole line feels like somebody was running out of things to say. <laughs> Someone in Sierra like, was running on fumes that day. <laughs> yeah. Okay, you're going to touch the iguanodon. And I've already written many different ways to say it feels like leather. I so, positively could not give a shit. It feels like a fucking <laughs> sauropod, okay? <laughs> it's a sauropod. It feels like a sauropod. How do you know what a sauropod <laughs> feels like? Fuck you, that's how. <laughs> uh, 
The thumb spurs on the Iguanodon make much more sense if it's a quadruped, because it would kind of like rear up and come down on you with those thumbs. Kind of mm -hmm. makes more sense. Like a, like a cassowary's ankle spurs. I'm not okay. buying it. <laughs> I didn't think it That's was okay. for sale. <laughs> I'm at peace with that. <laughs> like I... I Look, just... guys, it's a brontosaurus. <laughs> Here we go. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. <laughs> I don't know why the giant eye gives it a higher voice, but... Hey, guys. I'm the giraffe of the dinosaur world. Did we this, come... His head to... is truly mostly eye. <laughs> <laughs> a fine painting of a mighty brontosaurus, the thunder lizard. This huge creature with its tiny brain is currently the subject of a controversy. Dr. Earl Douglas from the Carnegie Museum of Natural History believes that current Brontosaurus displays have the wrong heads mounted on their skeletons. Ooh. Giant eyeballs. However, <laughs> Dr. Othniel Marsh who originally discovered the Brontosaurus believes that the heads on current displays are correct. Only time and more fossil evidence will conclusively prove which of these esteemed gentlemen is correct. I think we Did talked we about it last out? time, but I think the debate rages on. Yeah, I think it's yep. still going, right? Like, Let me double check that. Ah, Wikipedia. We have mentioned multiple times that uh, there was no, like... Like they were wrong with most of the dinosaur like bones, so so kind of makes sense. Id Idris's favorite dinosaur was the Brontosaurus. Well, here's your Bronto buddy right here. Mm -hmm. Hey, Idris, <laughs> I'm glad I'm your favorite dinosaur. I might not be real. <laughs> that doesn't matter. I have a cult. <laughs> I had, look, because there's no face drawn on me, this could be a valid position for my eye as well. I'm more like an anteater this way. <laughs> if, you, if you look at it, it could truly be like a big worm with legs. <laughs> <laughs> kind of, kind of adorable, but disturbing, you know? Hey guys, this way I'm drinking from the water. <laughs> With my Put weird my preposterous, so you can tell that I'm happy. <laughs> you know, like a dog or a cat, their tail up in the air. Mm. Yeah. While this is an interesting approach, it serves no practical. What? I clicked an eye on an object on a table. All right, fine. Apparently, I just wasn't close enough to the center of the bone. Now Laura has to walk all the way over to see it. A sign on this dinosaur bone display says, Please touch. Either these bones feel lonely, or the museum wants you to learn more about the bones by coming into close personal contact with them. Hmm. The thigh bone from a young Tyrannosaurus Rex who no longer has any need for it. Hmm. The bone is fossilized and dusty. Let's touch it. You pick it up and place it Whoa! in your purse. Whoa. That's not okay. <laughs> also, how does it well, fit? The thigh of a young T-Rex. I guess, guess if it's young enough, it'd fit. Cool. Just oh. theft. Just straight up theft. Wow. The thigh bone from a young Tyrannosaurus Rex who no longer has any need for it. Uh, like, oh. also, like, I don't think any T-Rex specimen is insignificant. I think they're all pretty important. I'll put it back later. <laughs> it's not like taking an ammonite, you know? <laughs> I just want to see how it feels in my pocket. Well, I'm going to I'm going to pack some turkey meat on it and I'm going <laughs> to eat it like a cartoon turkey it, leg. It's so even though there are little turkey legs. It's so completely established that she is anti fun. And <laughs> then she does this. I don't know what to think. You know, you know, you you can't get a read on her. She's a maverick. <laughs> I know, right? Uh, it's difficult to skim the Brontosaurus article because it's complicated, but the main thing these days seems to be whether or not the term Brontosaurus is synonymous with Apatosaurus or not. Right, right. Listen, what I meant was, is we tried to get Laura to do all kinds of things in the first game. 
and true. That's she true. wouldn't do anything. Yeah. So for her she to just, just take a bone, it. I'm a real girl now. I can do whatever I want. I think it's <laughs> yeah. Now that we don't have a text parser, she'll only do certain things. But you know, I I can appreciate it. Uh, oh, I was, that's a high note. Yeah, that's I, a uh, high one. I was uh, hanging out with my friend uh, Miriam last week, and uh, who is one of the only people I know who is a bigger nerd for animal facts than I am. She was pretty insistent that the Quetzalcoatlus could fly. Hmm. Might be like one of those dinosaur opinions, like, uh, like how, like how our our friend Greg is so offended that they had feathers. Like people have like strong opinions about dinosaurs, so might have been an element of that. But anyway, I would usually defer to her on bio on biology facts. And she was. Even though it makes way more sense when you look at a Quetzalcoatlus that it couldn't fly, mm -hmm. <laughs> she was pretty insistent that they could. That she was she was strongly in that camp. Yeah, I'm actually. Uh, I, I'm, one of our I viewers mentioned uh, Quetzalcoatlus was their favorite dinosaur. Mm -hmm. I buy it. The remaining bones are too small to hold your interest. There were more bones, apparently. Mm -hmm. Don't be greedy. You can't fit more than one of these huge bones into your little purse. You shouldn't have even fit one. It didn't one. say take one. It said touch. But, you know, okay, sure. Can I also steal this giant fucking painting off the wall? Although you're tempted to touch the painting, you think better of it. But why didn't you think better of taking a priceless <laughs> Tyrannosaurus bone? <laughs> it's an oil painting. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. Alright. Well, we've stolen something from this room. Let's go find something else to steal. Oh, it was yeah, Bunny we'll Cakes. Put it back. But, but Bunny Cakes is the one who said uh, Quetzalcoatlus was her favorite. Wow. Right on. I'm down. Hey, guys. I'm not a Quetzalcoatlus, but I'm the closest thing you're going to find in this game. So thanks for liking my cousin, Bunny Cakes. Jesus Christ. You're welcome. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I, I love that every dinosaur begins speaking by saying, hey, guys. Hey, guys. Yeah. It's just easy. sort of like whether they're showing up to eat other dinosaurs. It's like, hey, guys, I'm here <laughs> to eat you. Hey, guys, it's time to run away. It's a very 90s kids show. Yeah. I'm into it. This is beautiful. This is really yeah. nice. This, these are not dinosaurs. However, no, no, nor are they Egyptian uh, mm. things. No, they are. They're uh, they're vampire armor. The suit of armor is empty. Do you know no, why they're vampire armor? And nothing happens hmm. because they're not uh, reflecting on the fucking floor. Uh, there's like some vague reflections happening. Here. Yeah, that one. Yeah. I'm out. That would I'll be a really example. tedious thing to do with I the sprite know. work, though. I know. It's so mean of me. It's such a nitpicky bullshit thing. <laughs> I mean, if thing. these were not, um, <laughs> like, sprites that were meant to move, you could paint the, the like, mirror into it, and I, none would be the wiser. I know, I know. I'm just... I have, uh, in, in a previous uh, adventure game, point-and-click adventure game project, um built a uh, reflection, re reflective floor thing where I had basically like a flipped sprite that would mm -hmm. like walk um, underneath, like basically on your feet um, to sort of simulate uh, reflection on the floor. And it was, there was a lot of complicated math that had to be done there. I had to get someone from the AGS forums to help me. Well, it actually... It together. And they turned it into a module. So mm -hmm. that was nice of them. Well, that is cool. My my first thought when we got in here is these things are definitely going to move because there is no reflections. Hmm. It's going to be yeah, a night at the museum situation. Yeah. I think I took advantage yeah. of that module, Luke, because yeah, the the mirrors in Crimson Diamond. I just got was given a block of script that I could just plug in, and maybe that was <laughs> yours. I don't know. That's amazing. Whoa. I'll have to find out uh, who it was that did it. They mm -hmm. they helped me like get, like seven or eight years mm -hmm. ago or something like that at this point. So. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head, but I'll, I'll pop up on my AGS project and uh, mm. their name is in there. So, um, A fine example of Maximilian armor made in Germany in 1505. The steel has a characteristic silvery color. 
Maximilian armor was first used in Milan, which set the fashion for all of Europe in matters of dress and armor. I spent uh, six miserable months working for Goji Games, doctoring up like stills for a hidden object game. And uh, a common task was slapping the reflection of an object for which I only had a 2D image and not a 3D sprite onto it. So like, <laughs> I would just take one of those statues essentially, flip it upside mm -hmm. down and blur the shit, shit out of it and just trust that no one would be like, that's not perspectively correct. <laughs> <laughs> that's so if, fun though if I had a nice square like that box in the corner I would take the individual planes of it and mirror them to get a more compelling sort of 3D thing from it mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that makes sense I mean you know you, you gotta take what shortcuts are available to you especially if you gotta do it a lot right uh, these armor suits are enormous uh, the armor of Gallio de Genuiac 1465 to 1546. Distinguished member of one of the great feudal families of France, who served as a warrior under Charles VIII and was a master of artillery for Louis XII and Francis I. The structural features of the Genouillac armor dated 1527 indicate that it was made by an armorer who knew every trick of the art. Genuihach. Mm. The helmet and colletin offered complete protection for the head, and every surface is covered to deflect arrow, lance, and sword. It's also Perfect. covered in little trap doors from which spring loaded boxing gloves come out. <laughs> you get every trick of the armorer's trade. Nice. The helmet also has vision slits, ample for sight, yet narrow enough to prevent a weapon from entering. The helmet is reinforced with a forehead plate and a rondel in the nape of the neck, a weak spot in the human anatomy. Is that specifically this middle one that I clicked? Hmm. It was. An Italian suit of armor, circa 1470. The plates are skillfully modeled. The helmet is of a type known as a salade, introduced in Italy and Germany. The Salad helmet was elongated and pointed in the rear, normally worn with a neck and face defense called a mentonier. The mentonier's lower section was fastened to the breastplate and protected the neck, while the hinged upper part cupped high enough to protect the chin, nose, and cheekbones. Real armor nerd worked on this mm -hmm. section. Yeah, no kidding. The armor of Alessandro Farnese, Duke of Parma, circa 1570. It was made by Lucio Piccinino, master armor of the Renaissance. Elaborately decorated, this fine suit was presented to Archduke Ferdinand of the Tyrol in 1579, who kept it at Castle Ambras. He should have wore it. Yeah. Uh, you know, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> um, I was just going to say, is that the same the Archduke Ferdinand who got whacked and sparked off yeah. the World War One? He should have. That a, yeah, that's the... Probably. That's where I was going yeah. with that. But, you know, it's fine. I don't even think it was... A, there, there had to be many Archdukes of Ferdinand, right? Good name for an Archduke. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, th speaking of uh, armor nerds making video games, my first job... Uh, in games commercially was at uh, Konami and I was um, working on a different project but one of the guys in <clears throat> the uh, in the sort of development pit that I was in um, was doing the localization for one of the uh, Castlevania games um, and uh, yeah he he was having a lot of fun just coming up with like or sort of researching all the different parts of armor that would be uh, sort of used and named in uh, in this one of the uh, sort of more RPG-esque mm. Castlevania games. That was a lot of fun. He would, like, come over to our section and he would be like, does this look more like a... Uh, fuck, what was it? It was the it was the, the shin guard part of the armor. I can't can't quite remember what it, what the uh, two that he wanted us to sort of debate were, but it was fun times. Meanwhile, I was just playing a, a like 
doing QA on a uh, on a Nickelodeon game uh, based off of Shaolin Showdown. So, and stuff. Moving on, surviving examples of 14th century armor are rare. This armor is from Chalcy, circa 1400, showing a decorative fabric covering riveted to the plates. It has a fine globose brigandine with a deep skirt built of large shaped plates. Oh, now it's more Maximilian armor. The armor of Anne de Montmorency, constable of France, worn at the Battle of St. Quentin on August 10th, 1577. Thin and comparatively light, 50 pounds, it was worn by a man of 64 years, which was quite old for that time. This armor is a three-quarters fighting suit. Its illustrious occupant met his death at the Siege of Saint-Denis in 1567, at which time the armor came into the possession of the first Earl of Pembroke, who led the English knights into battle. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. The helmet on this Italian suit of armor, circa 1460, is interesting because mm -hmm. it's a barbute, which lacked protection for the lower part of the face. The barbute, or barbute, is sometimes called the barbuta salad, because, like the 15th century salad, it doesn't enclose the whole head, offering most of its protection to the top. Unlike the barbuta, however, the salad is often characterized by a reinforced forehead plate and an elongated, pivoted nape defense. It is, however, difficult to differentiate between the barbuta, the salad, and the bassinet. The shallow barbuta resembles the salad, while the deep barbuta resembles the bassinet. <laughs> yeah, I was wondering where we were going to hear from Matt's harmonica here. Then again, who, who really, really cares? cares? You know, as a uh, as a lover of obscure terminology and sort of like linguistic specificity, I'm underread on the subject of armor. It was a humbling uh, exploration of like how intricate a subject it is. Honestly, I appreciate all of this. Like, it's it's fun to read about, fun to know about. It felt like being in a museum. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Boy, did it! You're you're getting a little museum <laughs> That's experience. So angry. I get the feeling like. <laughs> Matt is not saying that in a positive way. <laughs> he didn't. He didn't expect to have to learn something tonight. I think. Uh, I you know mean, what? There is no armor. obligation to actually have learned any of this. <laughs> oh, there I didn't. Be no quiz. It's like, <laughs> yeah, like uh, through a tube. It's gone. All of it. <laughs> but I'll tell you this: uh, Armor Nerd mm -hmm. was my band in high school. <laughs> it's not mine was thing. mine was Nape Defense. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, nape defense. How, how did no that one was, say Franz that was my Ferdinand? Favorite term in there. Was there are there band name in high school? Franz Ferdinand. Well, that's a that's a <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd be <laughs> I'd be a lot more famous if that was true. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of the non-famous at all that I am now. Really? No, are you a tiny bit little famous? I'm a little bit famous. Yeah, there's <laughs> tens bit. of people who know about tens you. Tens. <laughs> tens. That's not famous. That's just almost as many people you don't know know about you as people who do know you. Is that true? No, it took me a second to decipher that grammatically. <laughs> but yes, that's correct. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> people I... who don't know you who know about you. Yeah. Right? Oh, Most oh, people who oh. don't know me also don't oh. know about me, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, exactly. yeah. No, it, it was it was it was an accurate statement. Okay, just click on the dog armor. You know you will. <laughs> I gotta find out if these are just randomly like grabbing from a pool of the of them, or if these are actually assigned one each. It would be oh, more yeah, work the... if they did it randomly. I don't know. Like they do that with like bookshelves and stuff like that in CR games quite frequently. You know. Mm, that's true. It would also be a good way if you and only had so many armor things. Hmm. That's true. An empty chest from the 15th century. Although the carvings on the exterior are crude, cut into the wood by someone with little talent or ability for wood carving, Jesus, uh, the chest now resides in a museum. 
simply because it's old. It's it looks so like, oh, harsh. Oh, 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 oh. It looks good from That's here. That's really mean. Like, nothing about, like, it's remarkable because it survived or anything like that. It's just a shitty box, and it's only here because it's old, and we're mad about it for some reason. <laughs> it's a museum. I mean, the stuff here is old, right? Usually? So angry. Frequently, frequently. The like, writing yeah. is really cool in this. Several of these pieces of armor... We only know about them because the person who wore them fucking died, right? Yeah, yeah. So clearly that armor is not the best. Because <laughs> it didn't <laughs> keep its occupant alive. I mean, to be fair, most likely even the best armor would not prevent someone from dying under most, like, particularly lethal circumstances. The, the, the guy who was a master artillerist, I really wanted his entire armor to be just completely flat. As if he just got <laughs> hit directly by a catapult stone and just flattened like a like a tin can. <laughs> you don't typically in museums see armor that is completely ruined, do you? I think probably like if like refined metal was a bit of a commodity, right? So like surely someone yeah, would salvage just, that and melt mm -hmm, it down. Mm -hmm, yeah. It would just leave it as a Also like if if a if they, they would either, like, sell it or melt it or whatever, or, like, they wouldn't just keep the flattened armor as a testament. Like, yeah, here's our guy, here's our, our champion who got fucking pancaked by a catapult stone. You don't just put that on display as a wall hanging. I mean, you know, here's the ornamental king's armor that was fucking destroyed by a ballista bolt or something like that, you know? It's just, it's just a perfectly, like, like, vertically flattened, like, a head to foot. So that it's like the helmet and the breastplate and the boots and the greaves, just everything and just a disc. And you just hang it on the wall and like, yeah, this is your, your uncle Vladimir. We're certain that he's dead. <laughs> there might be some of him in there. There's, there's bits of history that we're not sure about, but we're sure that he died in that fight. We found this compressed metal disc in a red puddle. Yeah, it's full of it's full of like you know bone fragments slowly turning to dust over the years. Kind of makes you stop and think, doesn't it? Oh, it does. A painting of the Black Prince as a fierce baby <laughs> by Ed Botticelli, <laughs> circa fifteen sixty. Fierce baby is such a good high school band name. Oh God, is it ever? <laughs> The Black Prince as a fierce baby, or even just the Black Prince. There's a lot of high, there's a lot of high school band names in here, honestly. Uh, the cheap wood frame is by the Lion Decker Museum, circa 1925. They hate wooden objects here. Yeah, they're kind of anti wood stuff in this, uh, or maybe it's Laura. I don't know, but don't touch it. You don't know where it's been. Upon close expansion, you see nothing new here. Up close, the suit of armor looks scratched. So you'll say that for all of them. Oh, 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 oh. No matter how closely you look, you see nothing at all in the suit of armor. Yeah, they're all but that one. I'm going to say it's scratched. One of these suits of armor has a murderer hiding in it. A male there. <laughs> The carvings on the chest depict <laughs> gnomes leaping through shrubbery. Finally. It's a shitty sculpture, though. A shitty sculpture of gnomes leaping through through shrubbery. <laughs> hey, guys. <laughs> I'm not a dinosaur, but I am living in the museum. <laughs> I sound just a little bit like Matt Berry. Just a little. It's I'm a good voice it. for an armored dog. Yeah. yeah. A house pet tastefully prepared for battle in 16th century armor. That is adorable. Mm -hmm. I gotta admit, my uh, my enthusiasm for the upcoming Fallout TV series uh, was uh, raised by at least a good 5% by the fact that uh, Matt Barry is voicing the uh, uh, the Mr. Handy. He's oh. great. He's a great voice for a Mr. It's Handy. It's such a goddamn good choice. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to watching that show. I'm a big Fallout fan, so it looks good, eh? It looks good. Looks like it looks like it's gonna be all right. 
uh, you know, we are now dating ourselves uh, as, you know, this having been recorded prior to the Fallout series. So we don't know if it's good or not yet. We just exist in a flow of time like the rest of you. Give us a break. We do. Seems <laughs> rather strange to be petting a dog wearing armor, doesn't it? A close look at the armor reveals a heraldic device of a fierce beaver rampant on a chevron among above the motto Ford Word. A small label indicates that this Scottish dog armor belonged to Lord Balfour, first Earl of Fife. No, I liked everything about that text bubble. I'm not even going to pretend <laughs> that I don't. Every little bit of that was great. <laughs> I wonder if that's a reference to Bruce Balfour, who was in the game credits. I think he was the designer. No, oh, could have been. I mean, it would not be hard for us to figure out who was the first Earl of Fife. <laughs> I love Fordward. That's mm -hmm. great. Fordward. I love I love a beaver as a heraldic beast. Mm -hmm. I want to know. Nice warp and woof in the fabric. I want to know why. Oh, never mind. No, why? What? No. Why, why? I want to <laughs> know. No, it's fine. The heraldic imagery on the Hicks family coat of arms is either an elk or a helmet, depending on mm. where you look. And mm. the motto is in French, but it says either tout bien ou rien, which is all good or nothing. Great slogan. Uh, or tout en bon heure, which is all in good time. I don't remember which is associated with the elk and which with the helmet, and I also don't know which is associated, because Hicks is a diminutive of Richardson, basically. Hmm. So it's like, it, there's not just one group of people that was known by that name. So we don't know which is ours. But those are the two that we found. They're both pretty wow. good. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're solid. I'd, I'd, I'd much rather, like, a cooler heraldic beast than a deer or a helmet. Okay, so that brings me to my next thing. Why? Why? Do the what is the why does the European beaver and the Canadian beaver look so similar? You know, I I want it. I want our beavers to be cooler looking than the European beaver, like badgers. You know, I want like our badgers are so much cooler than European badgers. Why do our beavers look are the they? same? Oh yeah, like the like the like the yeah like the British bee. I wasn't ba aware that there was a difference between like European and North American badgers. European badgers have big noses and they look like they're gonna have tea with you, <laughs> and 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 Canadian uh, badgers look like they're gonna rip you to fucking shreds. <laughs> it's probably because they're different species, but I don't know. I don't know the whole deal about it. There's a recognizable similarity. Uh, but yeah, the, the the European badger, you can understand why they dress it in waistcoats and make it into little people in like cartoons and stuff. Yeah. Whereas no one would do that to a North no. American badger. The North American badger is an animal. Uh, I actually did not realize the distinction until Matt pointed it out just Aww. now. But that's incredible. Yeah, the, 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 that's what I'm saying, right? And why are our people like, 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 like the, the European badgers are cute. Mm -hmm. like, I always uh, just assumed that that was just a, a characterization, like a no. like an anima animatification. Google of, it. Like, uh, uh, I can actually get you well, an I answer here, right Matt. Now, but... uh, the North American badger and the European badger, while both called badgers, are not closely related. See, that's what whereas I mean. the reason the beavers are the same is that they are both beavers. They're exactly. So they just, yeah. How? So that, that's that's uh, that's kind of a great question. I I don't know because like. The only way they could, like, it, it would have to be, like, land bridge shit, right? It would have to be, like, yeah, straight up Ice Age yeah. level stuff. It's not like they could swim across the Atlantic. Like, it's not like anybody, any humans would take beavers over. <laughs> like, I, like, <laughs> un either. unless, like, the first humans of North America had, like, fucking pet beavers or something, that would be a wild thing to discover. But I think it's just the same reason, like, there are people... Living, the 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 uh, Native Americans, uh, the first people to live in North America, uh, are genetically almost identical to humans found anywhere else, right? So the fact that that would also be true for beavers is not so insane. But it is it is weird that our badgers are so different. That is, that is yeah, very I mean, true. yeah, they're not they're not they're just somebody named them a badger because they're close. Yeah, two but things it, that it, have the same evolutionary niche. Where I think a beaver is a beaver is a beaver. It is funny to see a picture of both of the badgers. 
next to each other. I like the European yes. one more. How could you like the Canadian one more? I didn't say I didn't like it more. What I said is it's more badass. Yeah, he, Matt wants the Canadian beaver to be a fucking monster. Like, just, <laughs> just horrifying by comparison. <laughs> that would be great if all North American creatures were just disturbing megafauna. <laughs> and all European <laughs> creatures were like cuddly fairy tale things. Yeah. Comment below if you have or have had a beaver or a uh, badger as a pet. Okay. Yeah. Or have an, an encounter with them in any meaningful way. Well, it's the same like meaningful. like the raccoons, right? Like Canadian raccoons and Japanese raccoon, like tanuki, are like different things. Yeah, that's true. Yes, right? I had a, uh, I, I had a close encounter with a beaver growing up on Grand Manan, um, because we had them on the island and they sometimes had to be like re relocated. It's like a small island and they could fuck up a large area if they were in the wrong spot, so... Someone had to catch and relocate a beaver and before releasing it, brought it in to show the elementary school students. Um, so like the beaver was like not happy to be there, but it wasn't really mistreated at all. It was just like they brought it in. So kids got to like see it up close and then they went out. Disgruntled. And, yeah. So the beaver was like sad and mm. like angry and it pissed everywhere, <laughs> but it was neat to see one up close. <laughs> Do beavers I, like, have smelly the, urine? It was it was a, it was one of the most horrible days of that beaver's life, say. but it, it wasn't a human deliberately tormenting a beaver. They actually had to relocate it for like logistical they, reasons, and it, yeah. it had a fine life after that, I'm sure. They must have had smelly urine. Like it must be pretty bad. It was profound. Yeah. Wow. It, was, it, was, it, was, <laughs> uh, it was it was a remarkable odor. Wow. Anyway. It smelled like a defense mechanism for sure. I'm sorry I got all cranky about the beaver stuff. I'm sorry. No, Matt, I I did not realize until this moment that our badgers are so much scarier. Mm -hmm. It's like a fucking wolverine. <laughs> it it's is. So, yeah. It's so... Like, <laughs> there's nothing cuddly about it. I, ca I can't believe you didn't know that. That's awesome. Like, I, I would get... Like, I would definitely get hurt approaching a European badger. Because I can't imagine they're much friendlier, <laughs> especially but they look like friendlier. The, yeah. the 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 badger, the Europe, both badgers have that honest signaling where they have like reverse camouflage to make it clear that you're not supposed to fuck with them. But I would not accidentally approach a North American badger thinking that it was friendly. I would not make that mistake. <laughs> it would be obvious that it wasn't. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. Anyway, well, there you go. There you go. Are badgers ubiquitous? Like, aren't there badgers in like desert areas as well? Am I am I like just thinking of the gods must be crazy, um, and not like and thinking of the wrong part of the movie, or are there just badgers of some kind or another everywhere? Just about everywhere. I have um, never seen one in yeah. real life. Looks like we don't get them in Australia or South America. But I think everywhere else has some kind of badger. Uh, I mean, badger just has every other kind of fucked up animal. Also, you know, that's fine. Like, there's the honey badgers in Africa, which are yeah, just yeah. like they're 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 yeah, they're, precisely. They're, honey yeah. badgers. They're they're even bat more badass than Canadian they're badgers. they're mustelids, uh, like weasels, martins, etc. And uh, like those are those are a hearty animal. Um, you'll find mustelids almost everywhere. This has been Badger Facts. Thank Badger you for joining the Level Zero NPCs. That is a that was my band name in high school. It's real bad. It was a bad band. We were shot. A rare seventeenth century English tapestry, which tells the story of Teutonic warrior cockroaches that crossed into England from Germany and besieged the castle of Rochford on Essex. See th this. Okay, go on. Sorry. <laughs> Although the cockroaches managed to storm the castle walls after a ninety-day siege, the knights of the castle managed to squash the invaders when they reached the castle's inner keep. Since that great battle, the castle of Rochford on Ex Essex has been free of cockroaches. However, unfortunately, it has also been free of humans. One year after the great battle, everyone in the castle died of the plague. Shortly afterward, the castle fell into disrepair and sank into the swamp. 
Is that this was all? Shit. Is this all fake? That's what my question is. When I, when you're reading that, I, the, the the armor stuff sounded pretty that legit. That feels like it should have been. But I'm kind of worried now that this is all just like false facts. Oh shit! Oh. Wasn't that like the stealth music in Quest for Glory? Mm. Yeah. I looked away for one second. What happened to us? What's going on? Oh, but there's, so there's like the a tapestry. there's like a, a place to hide back there. That's cool. that is. Yeah, I, I clicked on the tapestry and hid behind it. That is exact. Like that the was the stealth music, right? From from Quest yeah. for Glory. Mm. Wow. That feels very much like the stealth music from. The, the band Badger Facts, it'd be great if they were like a heavy metal band with like incomprehensible screamo music, but the lyrics is just teaching you about badgers. <laughs> be awesome. Oh, can I ventriloquize the dog? No. No. Silence alone is great. All else is weakness. Alfred Davini. That's, well. That's cool. This will come in handy later. Probably. I want to say, though, that we're probably out of time. So, thank you for joining us for Badger Facts. Hey. We'll be back. I'm, I'm so delighted to learn that the North American Badger is such a fucking bummer. <laughs> <laughs> That's the funniest thing I've learned in a while. Super it's, let down. Just immediately, as soon as you see the comparison, it's so scary to look at. I, it's great, it's great. We gotta get uh, we gotta send one to Luke so he knows what the fuck we're talking about here. Yep. Like the actual uh, animal uh, or the picture. Now that the episode is over, go Google yourself some badgers, and we'll see you next episode. Thank you very much, everybody. Stick and stay. Have yourself a future. <laughs> um, Have yourself a future. <laughs> Find yourself a tomorrow. Stick and stay. Find yourself a tomorrow. There you go. <laughs> Have Stick and stay. We're really in you. Do it, guys. Like, that's, that's, you know. What are you waiting for? Yeah. Yeah. Have it. Let's, Have yourselves a future. We're going to get Any out of this. Any kind you armor. want. I, I promise all of you we're getting out of this armor room next next episode. <gasps> I promise you. There's a lot yeah. of armor facts to read. Someone worked hard writing and researching that shit. I, I completely agree, and I think it's great. There are a lot of flags to still look at, Matt. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> He's so oh, sad. <laughs> okay. I just know that if I'm feeling this way, there's a good chunk of our viewers that are also feeling this way. It's fine. Uh, there are people who came here for the game. There are people that are here for, for all of this, though. So The the list of people um, I know and the list of people who are not like Matt, like the Venn diagram is just a circle. <laughs> no, I don't know anyone similar to Matt. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, well, okay, look, here's the thing. I, so what I'm talking about is ADHD. Well, I'm, is, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. I'm not saying, you know, that's all. That's what I'm saying. You know. Oh, shit. I got bubbles in my tummy. <laughs> <laughs> See you next episode, everybody. Oh, I thought this was the new one. Happy oh, well. the future. See you later. Bye. I wanted to give everybody a, a, an opportunity to get up and pee because apparently that's our thing now. <gasps> I could go get a. I could go get a drink. I need. I need. Yeah. A, I need a. You're welcome to go and get a drink. My Ooh. bladder's only at a comfortable thirty percent, but I will go refill my coffee. All right. right on. This is great. I love these little breaks. <laughs> Fine. I'll. I, I could pee too. I. I told you. I take every opportunity, so I'm gonna do that yeah. too. Oh, and even though you... we could cut this out, we no. might not. That's fine. Let's no, not. Really